when peace like a river attend my way when sorrow like sea billows roll And whatever, my Lord, Thou hast told me to say, that it is well, it is well with my soul. I tend my way when sorrow like sea below roll she would to say it is well it is well with my soul and it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul come on up and say it is well and we my soul, in my soul. Everybody say, Come and sing it like you mean to say, It is well, it is well. It is with my soul. Everybody say, Come on, lift it and say, With my soul. From the top, using the first key. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. Now you say, When peace like a river. And when peace like a river attended my way, when sorrow like sea.
When peace like a river like a river I I want to hear the congregation sing I want to hear the congregation sing this song The words are up there When peace like a river I want you to sing this song like you know what you're saying Like you understand the words. You took me to say Sing it with your from, from your from the depth of your soul. Sing it from the depth of your soul. I want you to declare that it is well with your soul today. When peace like a river. Come and take it up. When peace like a river. Declare it today. When Where 
soul that I downcast will receive a lifting. It's not a job for one man to do. It's not a job for, for the worship leader to do. We're all going to do this together. Declare over this atmosphere that it is well, it is well.
declare it one more time. Say it is well with my soul. We'll say it is well. Come on, say with my soul and with my soul. We say it is well. It is. It is keep well. On. So, declare it over your life. Come on, let's raise it One up. One more say, time. Oh, it is well. It is, it is well. And with my soul, I should say. Woman, it is well with you. You better believe it. The enemy will not touch your mind. The enemy cannot touch your mind. Come on, come on, declare. It is well. It is well. It is well with your marriage. It is well with that situation. Because Jesus, your ever-present help in time of need, is coming in. But you need to speak. You need to speak to the situation. Positivity. And say it is well. 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 I declare over your life today that it is well. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit in this atmosphere, begin to make all things well, begin to touch souls, begin to touch the very core, Jesus, 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 for so long your head has been bowed, you've been crippled by fear and my worry, come on now, declaring today, your life is worth a living because you live. Your life is worth a living just because you live. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Because you live. I know they have said things about you. I can face tomorrow. They have said you cannot amount to anything. Because he lives. But because he lives. All my fear is gone. He holds your future. No man holds your future. Your future belongs and is in the hands of the one who made you. Come on now. Sing it if you can. Declare it if you can. Come on, sing with me. Because he lives. Tell your Goliaths and your Pharaohs and your and the Red Seas and the walls of Jericho that because he leaves, you are going to fulfill destiny. All my fear is gone. Fear cannot cripple me any longer. Because I know Intimidation cannot hold me bound any longer. He because I know in whom I believe. My life is I know that he that is in me is greater. Is Come on. Because, because Jesus leaves. Because Jesus leaves. Because you leave. I can face tomorrow. All fear is gone. All my fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know. Oh, you own my future. Oh, Jesus, my life is worth living. My life is worth no more suicide. No more time. thoughts of suicide. Because, because I am worth living. Because Jesus is alive because in me. Because you leave all my fear. My brother, don't quit. You are so close. Don't quit. He that is in you is greater. 
that he that opposes you he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world so because Jesus needs you are going to face tomorrow you are going to face your challenges you are going to face the storm you are going to stand the storm eyeball to eyeball and because Jesus Christ lives in you you are more than a conqueror because I Now, just one more time, I want you to declare as you sing this song, because he leaves, you can face tomorrow. Because Jesus Christ leaves, all fear is gone. Because you know that he holds your future. Your life is worth. Your life is worth. Your life is worth. Your life is worth a living. Your life is worth. You are worth something, not just anything, but you are worth God himself, that he came down and he died for you. I know people have said many things about you. I know people have ridiculed you. I know people have slandered your name. They have gossiped about you. They have said to your face, you are not going to amount to anything. But one man has spoken when God has not said it. God is not finished with you. When man closes a chapter, God is opening a new book for you. When man says it is finished, God says, I am just starting with you. Behold, I make all things new. He says, I make all things beautiful in each time. So I want you to sing the song one more time. Face those things eyeball to eyeball in your spirit. you are going to face tomorrow you're not going to be afraid of the doctor's report anymore you're not going to be intimidated by anything anymore because Jesus Christ lives in you come on now my life is worth a living just because just because just because come on now because he leaves because he leaves the fear that crippled me is gone. And now I know that the Creator holds my future. My life is worth a living. No more suicide, no more suicidal thoughts. In the name of Jesus. Somebody bless God this afternoon. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. It doesn't matter what they have said about you. It doesn't matter how many times they have tried to push you down. Ask Joseph. They took his, his robe off him. They threw him in the pit. He was sent to Potiphar's house as a slave. He ended up in prison. But somehow, 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 he is working everything out. The Bible says that we know that all things work together for, for good. For those who were called. We exalt you, O oh God. We exalt you, Jesus. I ask, O oh Lord, that your presence will saturate this place. That every heart that is hardened, that is resisting your word, even right now, I take authority over such spirits. I take authority over such hardened hearts. And I say, you will melt in the presence of God. You will bow, like the Bible talks about Dagon. The dead place the ark of God in a shrine. And the Bible says that Dagon fell down. And the next day they placed him back. And he fell down and this time he was left with just his torso. I speak over this atmosphere. Everything that was sick to disrupt the word of God. You are no match for the spirit of the most high God. Therefore I command you in the name of of Jesus to take your exit now. I saturate this atmosphere in the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you release the angels of God right now and begin to mend broken hearts. 
where hearts are questioning and where there is so much worry and so much doubt and, and, and depression and, and, and worry and anxiety. I pray for a release of your fragrance. You are Jehovah Shalom. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. It is just perfect. Release your perfect peace in this place this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name. Bibles, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 16. I want to speak to us this afternoon about something called manas peace. Peace as in P-E-A-C-E. Peace and manna as in manna, what God provided for them in the wilderness. I'm going to explain to you why I have decided to call it manas peace. And I pray that after today, God will release a peace that passes all understanding that even whilst you're there in the wilderness the peace that he will release unto you will be second to none people will ask you how how are you doing this i might be fairer living in a, in the palace and i see you my fellow israelites in the wilderness but there is something you have that i don't have and I pray that today God will release that kind of peace to you in the name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 16. Like I usually do when I when I read verses, I try to I stop in between and I just pick up things from this from the verse, even though that's not my main my main theme. I just like picking things out from verses, so just bear with me as I do that this afternoon. Exodus 16 verse 1, And they took their journey from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came on to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after the departing out of Egypt. Verse 2, it says, And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for you have brought us into this wilderness to kill us with hunger. So they were complaining that why has Moses brought them out that ha, ha, did God bring them out of Egypt where they were able to eat flesh which is meat and bread has God brought them out to to kill them in the wilderness to kill them with hunger verse 4 he says then said the Lord unto Moses behold I will rain bread from heaven for you I will rain bread from heaven I would say amen if I was you I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 35, that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. A reassurance was given, immediately they complained, and God sent his word. He said, behold, I would rain. Some of you have received words in your life. God has given you words. But then it seems like, okay, nothing really is happening. The Bible says that when he, when he speaks forth a word, it doesn't return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which he has been sent to do. Amen. When you're in a crisis, after you've cried, I'll advise you to pray before crying. Run to God and say, God, what are you saying about this? Because that's what's going to hold you and keep you through the, the hardship and the difficult time. A word from God. And so these people were in the wilderness and they were saying, would, would you, do you want to kill us with hunger? And then the word of God came. May God send his word to you. The Bible says that he sent forth his word and he healed them of all their diseases. He sent forth his word and he healed them of all their diseases. 
John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Half of your problems will be solved if you just go to God and say, God, what are you saying? God, I need to hear from you. I know this person has gone through this. I don't care if it ended bad for them. I'm different. I want to hear what God has to say about me in this situation. When businesses are closing down, and it seems like yours is about to, people are, you're dismissing people at work, and it seems like you're next in line. Everyone around you is going through a hard time, going through a divorce, and it seems like you're next in line. Run to God. Say, God, what are you saying? God, what is your word? And when he releases the word, things begin to change. I carry on. Verse 5. And it came to pass, sorry, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, so he was still giving them instructions, they shall prepare what they will bring it in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. You don't need to really understand that. You can read another version when you get home. Verse 6, and Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel that at, in the evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because he hears your mourning. And what are we that you murmur against? So, so basically this book murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, verse 2. But verse 7, Moses says, okay, you're murmuring against God, so... When you murmur against your leaders, people that God has put over you, you're actually murmuring against God. I just thought to remind you in case you forgot. Verse 8, and then Moses, and Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. Bear with me, I'm going to read a lot of scriptures just this, just this time. And in the morning, bread to the full, for the Lord heareth your mur murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. I'm going to read that again. And Moses said, this shall, this shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Verse 9, and Moses sp spake unto Aaron, and then he gave them instructions. Verse 14. Verse 13. And it came to pass that in the evening the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay around round about the host. Verse 14. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the whole frost on the ground. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, a.k.a. see, upon the face of the wilderness, upon your dry land, upon your barren land, that's where your, the miracle is. Don't miss it. God might not necessarily take you out of the wilderness for your answer to come. And sometimes we miss this because we are waiting to come out of the wilderness before we can receive from God. But he's saying there in the wilderness, behold, see. And the Bible says there lay a small round thing. Do not despise the days of small beginnings. You're ill in your body. Ten systems in your body are malfunctioning. God heals one. Like, what's this? There lay a small round thing. As small as the whole frost on the ground. What strikes me in this verse is that the Bible says that the lay and when the dew was gone up, sometimes before God can bring what He's what He has promised you, some things need to leave. God could not bring down manna whilst the dew was still on the floor. Moisture. It would have spout. what God was doing. I'm going to give you a few examples that might actually prick some people's hearts, but I'm not speaking about anyone in particular. These are the examples that came in. I was preparing for this message. 
Sometimes you are praying, God, I want to get married. I want to find a wife. I want to find a husband. And the dew in your life, God is saying, I cannot bring that person to you because you are still stuck, struggling with sexual perversion, like masturbation, pornography, fornication. And you are praying to God to bring his own child into your life. How many of you, if you had a daughter or a son, you don't even need to be married to, to imagine. And then there's this crazy man or crazy woman who is saying, please, I want to spend the rest of my life with, with, your, with, your, with your, the thing you carried in your womb for nine months, the person you have taken care of. I want, to, I want to take them into my house and live with them forever. How many of you will say, oh, here's my daughter. She really needs to leave the house. How many of you will say, yes, here is my son, please? And so spiritually, some of us look a bit crazy. I know, <laughs> just accept my example. We are so messed up. And I'm not pointing fingers because we all have to come to Christ for God to shape in us and, you know, put us together. And God is saying, allow me fix you up. Allow me take away the dew from your life and I will produce the manna in you. Allow me remove the things that when I, when I give you what I need to give you, it will not be put. Because what's the point of releasing manna if there is still moisture on the floor? Some of you want your businesses to bloom. God has given you an idea. The idea actually came from God. Okay? God is saying, the dew in you is that you were selfish. You hold, you hold things. You don't want to give anything up, but you want me to give up my empire for you. You don't know how to pay your tithe. There is an excuse every month. And you want God to give you a multi, multi-million business where, oh, forget it, you're not even going to pay an offering class of tithe. You would not even come to church. You'd be too busy sitting in your sitting room, you know, looking at TV and, and all this fantastic station, just, you know, I'll sew here and there, and you think, oh, because I'm sewing, it's okay. No, 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 no. Those things that you're doing are extra. The, the main ones that God has asked you, your tithe and your offering. The last example that came to me was some of you, the Bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly. Some of you want friends, but every friend you've had, you have gossiped about them. You have slandered them, and God is saying, until you remove this dew, you will remain lonely. I'm not going to bring somebody who is, in quotes, a friend. If God gives you a friend, he has given you a friend, trust me. He's not going to give you a friend who happens to be the bishop of a great church. And then before you know it, the person's secret is all over. They tell you something today, Chinese whispers. And you know, you don't even, even if you're going to gossip, say the right things. You know, don't remove and add. The Bible says well, if, you remove, if you read Revelation, remove and you add, you know. It's not right. Carry on. Verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, because they did not know what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Like I said, I'm just bringing out things from this. I'm going to wrap it up very soon. So the Israelites said, Okay, so they have cried out to God. God has taken away the dew. And now God has produced the manna. And the manna is staring them in the face, but they do not know what it is. Sometimes the answer you are looking for does not come in the form you're expecting. Ladies, I had to go there. You've given God your statistics, and God is saying, you're still crying, I say, God, I want a man. And God is like, that's the one. <laughs> Nobody likes to hear that. I'm telling you, I remember when I was, when I was, 
I would I don't know if I was really praying for a husband, but I knew that the season had come. And um I was I used to tell God, you know, you know how you know how everyone wants like, you know, pure people and things. Well when I say everyone, you know what I mean, I don't mean everyone. And Pierre was my friend then. And I used to tell him, the last person I want to ever get married to is a pastor. And he, and, and he kept on, he knew he, he, knew he wanted to, to marry me. And he kept on saying, no, 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 you don't say things like that. You're gonna, you might just end up scaring the person away. <laughs> but on a serious note, and, and I'm so glad I married him. Like I couldn't have made, a be- I made the best choice ever in my whole life, the best choice, hands down. You can't even compare. It's like comparing gold to, to what? Nothing. You cannot compare. But I had my own picture. I wanted to marry someone who was somehow in the business world. Just like if you who start work at 9 a.m. and come back at 5 p.m. Who would take me on holidays? Who would take me shopping? I, I didn't want to marry a pastor because I had seen the way some pastors had treated their wives. And I had seen the way some pastors were just like, nah, it's all right. <laughs> Thank God for, in quote, the Bible says, Moses said to them, this is it. This is the bread that you have asked the Lord to give you. I pray God will release Moses in your life. People that will tell you, you know that thing you've been praying to God for, Natalia, that's it there. You've been crying out to God, God, I want my debts to be paid. And God is like, and, and, and then your mother's like, no, no. You know that thing, that idea you told me about, how you, how you want to sew people's, you want to mend people's clothes with holes. You want to mend people's buttons that have fallen off. You know that idea you said you have. That's the answer to your debts. Some of us are waiting for us, to, uh, for us to see checks in the post. When last did you see a surprise check in the post? Anybody? I would like to change my postcode to yours. When last did you have a debt of, of thousands and for some people almost millions and the company just says, oh, we're going to write it off. Of course these things don't happen. But God is like, okay, this is the answer. Some of you are failing in university or college or whatever, and God is like, you're crying out to God and say, God, I want to pass. And God is like, the answer to your prayer is you need to change your group of friends. It's that simple. And you realize when you change those friends, the ones you're going to find will, will go to the library, will read, will not spend their whole time partying, Facebooking, and you know, the other things that people do at university. Verse 16, and this thing, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. So God gave an instruction. So after God had released his manna, God then gave an instruction and said, every man should gather, gather of it every man according to his eating. An omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in, the, in his tent. So God knows what he's doing. Verse 17. And the children of Israel did so and gathered. Some gathered more, some gathered less. He say, say, I want you to say, say this. Some gathered more. Some gathered less. Okay. Verse 18 says, And when they did measure it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing remaining. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Stop comparing yourself to another person. The Bible says that he that had plenty... He that had excess, he that gathered much, had nothing left over. And he that gathered little, did not lack anything. Stop comparing your giftings to the person who is rolling around on the altar. You're going to give account for what God has asked you and for what God has given you. Don't let your stomach burst because you want to eat some people's food portions. Eat what is okay for you. Let them eat, isn't it? (laughs) Let them eat what is okay for them. And everyone is happy. Everyone moves on. Stop comparing yourself to another person. Stop comparing your grace levels to another person's. 
And Moses said, let nothing, let no man leave anything until the morning. And then God gave an instruction. You should not pack these things and keep them for yourselves. Notwithstanding, they did not hearken unto Moses, but some of them left it until the morning and it bred worms and it stank. And Moses was very wroth with them. When God gives you a blessing and there, will, there might be times he will ask you, okay, withdraw, let go. Don't say, oh God, because you gave it to me, I must hold on to it. If, I, if Abraham had decided to hold on to Isaac, do you think God could have killed him himself? I think so. Just wake up and Isaac has not woken up in the morning. He's gone. So why don't you just let go? The Bible says that they, they think the very thing that God gave them, the next day, those that took it, took extra, the Bible says it, it bred worms and it stank, but it was from God. And it came to pass, verse 22, on the sixth day, so God had said, okay, because of the Sabbath day, I want you to, to pick up extra. Jump, 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 jump. Verse, 20, verse 28, and the Lord said to Moses, and he was giving some, some more instructions, how long would you refuse to keep my commandments? And then the Lord started speaking about the Sabbath. Verse 32, verse 31, and he says, and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. Manna means what is, what is it? They called the name of that thing manna because, and it was like coriander seed, it was white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Verse 32, and Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer and keep it for your generations, that they may see the bread where I fed you in the wilderness. So hear this now. The same, the same manner that the next, very next day bread warms, on the, on the back of another instruction, is the same manner that kept for generations on God's own instruction. So when you realize, that's why you should go on the altar and say, God, what are you saying today? This thing worked yesterday. Is it going to work today? And some of us are hitting our head, you know, saying, okay, God says on the Sabbath day, the, the, the manna that they picked up did not spoil. And some people are like starving themselves and there's no manna, but God's like, I've already asked you to take extra for the next day but we're not really listening to him and we say oh god is so mean he god doesn't care about us but god is like i'm speaking but are you listening and moses said unto aaron take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein and lay it up before the lord to be kept for your generations verse 34 and the, as the lord commanded moses aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept verse 35 he says and the children of israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited they did eat manna until they came onto the borders of the land of cana verse 35 is actually the main thing it says remember i said the title of my message was manas peace the children of israel did eat manna for 40 years not one day did god forget that he needed to supply manna to his people that is the kind of peace that god wants you to have the kind that says okay i have known god i have tried him i have tested him if god did not fail in the first year he did not fail in the second or in the third or in the fourth, why is he going to fail now in the fifth if his instruction has not changed? It's the kind of peace that makes you go to bed at night. And even if things, it doesn't matter if your, if your child's school fees are not ready. If, they need, if it needs to be paid by 8 a.m., it doesn't matter what's happening at 7.30. It doesn't matter what is happening at 7.45. At 8 a.m., that thing will show. That is what is called manner's peace. This is the kind of peace that, 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 that blows your mind and passes all understanding. It's the kind of peace that makes Jesus Christ sleep in a boat where the, where the storms are raging and the, and the disciples say, don't you care? 
is the kind of piece that make people think, okay, are you crazy? Do you know even people are even telling you, Natalia, can't you see the things that are happening in your life? They want you to see your problems. And you're like, no, no, yeah, I, I can see what's going on in my life. But I have a peace that passes all understanding. I have a peace that my human mind cannot comprehend. I have a peace, Esther, that when I'm going through stuff, you cannot understand why I'm so relaxed. Because if the human mind cannot understand it. I have a peace that when my doctor gives me a report, he's like, all these Christians, they've come again. I'm like, is this, your, is this, all, you can, is this all you can say? Is this all you can do, devil? Is this, your, is this your best or your worst? I have a peace that follows me into my closet. That when I'm praying to God, I'm not praying out of fear, but I'm praying out of faith. That is the peace that passes all understanding. There is a peace that makes you go to bed whilst your house is shaking, even physically. Not everyone dies in earthquakes. Not everyone dies in natural disasters. At least one person sometimes gets saved. So why can't you be that one person? Everyone in your family ends up getting divorced. Why can't you be that one person who says, no, my marriage is going to stand? Philippians 4, 6 to, verse, from verse 6 to verse 8. I'm going to, read it. I'm going to read the message, but just put um, King James. I'm going to read from the message Bible. The man of peace that I'm speaking about is a piece that says, if God did it before, he's going to do it again. Some of you need to, sometimes you are waiting to hear a word from God. Like I've said, always get the word from God. But sometimes we are waiting. And God is like, okay, in this situation, my track record is excellent. Let my reputation speak for me. Are we there? Okay, I'm going to read the, mes- the, the, the message version. He says, do not fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Say, instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summon it all up, friends. I say, I would say, you do your best by filling your mind and meditating on things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best and not the worst. Some of you need to, when you're going through bad situations, think about the best and not the worst. Think about things of praise and not things of curses. Put in practice what you have learned from me and what you have heard and what you you have seen and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together will walk you into your most excellent harmonies. Some of you need to stop talking. There are some people in your life that when you have issues, you should not even bother speaking to them. They will make it look bigger. I'm not trying to give anyone any human praise or, you know, trying to curry any favor, but my mother-in-law is here by the grace of God. I've realized that every time I have an issue and I speak to her, sometimes even whilst I'm texting her, the issue has been solved. And I'm like, okay, mom, you know, remember that thing I told you about? Okay, don't worry. Don't speak to people who, who would say, ah, Esther, is that what the doctor said? You know, last week I had a friend who had the same thing and the person died. <laughs> there are people like that in your life. You need to identify them quickly. Amen. Run away from them. And even when your testimony comes and you share your testimony with them, they'll say, oh, I hope it's permanent because these things reoccur after years. Oh, there are people like that. Your business blooms and they say, okay, you need to be careful now. Nobody says nobody's not going to be careful. 
You need to be careful that the battle is not over. <laughs> Numbers 23 verse 19. The man of peace that I'm speaking about, remember at the beginning I told you that God has said, I will send you this bread. Numbers 23, 19. It is a, this is a peace that is backed up by God's word himself. It is backed up by God's reputation. He says God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, shall he not do it? Has he spoken it, shall he not make it good? Shall he not make it good? Finally, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. I want to read us a quick story and we're going to pray. 2 Kings chapter 4. Now, this is after you have taken your problems to God. 2 Kings chapter 4. This tells us about a story of a Shunammite woman. She had no children and the man of God, you know, prayed for her and, 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 and the rest was history. She had a child. Verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. And it fell on a day. Okay, so verse 8 to about 13. 17 talks about the, whole, the miracle of her having a child. You can read that when you, when, you go, when you get home. Verse 17, it says, And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. I'm not one, I, I'm not really one who like, you know, loves people like going around from conference to conference and, you know, people like just pushing it, laying hands on you. And, and, but there, there is a place where you need to receive from a man of God. When I say man, I mean other man or woman. I know some people like to, to get direct access to, to God. But sometimes, or should I say many times, according to the time of life, verse 18, and when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said unto, unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when they had taken him up and they brought him to his, to, brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. This child was saying, my, my father, my head, my head. The father knew this was very serious. Okay, let us take it to the spiritual one in the house. Let me take it, take, go to your mother. Verse 20. And when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. He sat on her knees until noon, and then he died. Some of you can begin to see signs in whatever area that something is not right. You, you, but you don't do anything about it until in court it becomes too late until in court the thing dies when are you going to open up your eyes and be sensitive and say okay I might not be able to place my hands on exactly what's wrong but something is wrong and I'm going to deal with it now in prayer I'm not going to wait for for this child to die before I run in court to the prophet and say, okay, where is your God? I didn't ask you for this child. What are the signs you were seeing? Things have not blown out of proportion, but you're starting to smell the smoke. You have not seen the fire, but you were smelling the smoke. But you're waiting for the full-blown fire to pop up. Don't wait. Thank God Elisha was still around. Thank God Elisha. If not, the story would have ended as it ended and then died. Full stop. And so many times in our lives, the story ends that way. Because we are not proactive. We just, we just, we're waiting for God every time to do everything for us. Forgetting that we are made in his image and after his likeness. And so basically, these people run to, there's a whole long story there. And they get Elisha to finally come. Verse 26, it says, run now, I pray you to meet her. 
and say unto you, unto her, it is, is it well with you? Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with the child? What did she say? Is 26 on? What did she answer? What did she answer? I didn't just feel like singing this afternoon when I said we should sing that song. I wasn't just trying to while away time when I said we should sing that song. That it is well with your soul. In every dead situation, let's stand to our feet. In every dead situation, in every, in every cloudy thing. This woman said, it is well. The very thing that was dead, she spoke. And she said, it is well. And the Bible goes on and on. And then finally, the Bible talks about how the boy was raised back to life. The Bible says in verse 37. Let me read from 34. It says, and, when, and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes. Some of you need eye transplant. You need a mouth transplant. Your eyes keep seeing negativity. Your mouth keeps speaking negativity. The Bible says Elisha put his mouth onto the child's mouth. And his eyes on. Some of you need to go to God and say, God, put your mouth in my mouth. Put your eyes in my mouth. I want to see like you see. I want to speak like you speak. And when there was a transfer, Esther, when there was a transfer, when there was an exchange, the very thing that was dead, that carry on. And he says, and he put his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and he stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times hallelujah and the bible says and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said call the Shunammite woman there is a peace that God is going to release over your life this afternoon. He said, call the Shulamite woman. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, take up your son. Take up your son. Take up the very thing that has died in your hands. Take up the very thing that your mistakes have killed. Take up the very thing that your laziness has killed. Take up the very thing that your bad character has messed up. The Bible says, and then she went in and she fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and she went out. Some of you are dying slowly in your problems because you don't want to share with anyone. I'm not saying you should go for the, for the town's latest gossip. But who is the Elisha in your life? If this woman did not go to Elisha, she was so proud or she felt, my prayers can actually do something. I can hack this thing out in my bedroom. I can actually pray and fast for myself. This child would have been buried that same day. But she said, no, 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 Amanda, this problem is too big for me. I need somebody who, see, who speaks with God. I need somebody who has a closer and a tighter connection with God. I need to speak to somebody who I know lives a life of holiness. I want to speak to someone who is a worshiper. I want to speak to someone who God himself has placed his hand upon. That when he takes, he or she takes my issue before God, I know that God would hear. And peradventure, let's say you are all that and three bags of, ch of chips and you are, you are very fantastic with God. There are some times in your situation that you cannot pray for yourself. You need to run to someone and say, I need you to help me. I need you to stand with me. I need you to intercede for me. I need you to tell me to pull myself together. And, and after my child is raised, after I have the dead thing back in my hands, then I can break down. Then I can cry. Then I can pull my hair and run around like a mad woman. But until that thing gets back in my hands, there is a peace that I want God to release upon you. That even this, you know, my, this, do, do you know do you know what kind of peace it is for your child to be dead and the prophet asks you is all well with your child and you answer it is well that is a peace that passes all understanding that is a peace that defiles all odds that is a peace that your human mind cannot comprehend that is the peace that 
pushes you to look for help. I want you to cry and say, God, release that peace upon me today. Release that peace upon me today, great God. Come on, Pastor Paul, play something for me. There is a peace that God releases that causes you to see the solution in a problem. There is a peace that makes you wake up from your bed each morning and declare, it is well with me. There is a peace that when the landlord comes and knocks on your door, as soon as he opens the door, you say, landlord, it is well with me. What about you? You think I'm joking? There is a peace that makes you go to the home office and they begin to interview you. And in your mind, you say, it is well with me. It is well with my application. You go for a job interview. And before you open up your mouth to say something, you say, it is well with me. It is well with me. It is well with me. The child might be dead, but it is well. Somebody cry out to God and say, God, release that peace. Release that peace that causes me to say it is well. Holy Spirit, even right now, begin to release your word upon every dry and barren land, upon every dead situation, upon every dead child in court. Some of you feel that, oh, some of you need to stop speaking negativity over the lives of your children. Oh, you're stubborn. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. No, you're going to say it is well with you, whether you like it or not. I say to you, son, it is well with you. Whether you like it or whether you want to like it or not, daughter, I say it is well with you. I will go to your bed. I will anoint your pillow. And I say as you sleep, it is well with you. A husband or a wife that is straying away. I will speak to you when you leave the house. As you are shutting the door behind you, I will say, it is well with you. I will say, it is well. When I open up my books to study for my exams, before I begin to find things confusing, I will declare, I will speak the word. I will straighten, straighten things out. And I will declare that it is well. Come on, declare these words. Come on, declare God's words this morning. Come on, declare it. Say it is well. Come on, declare it. Declare it. Speak into your situation. Speak. This morning we've been taught about the power of confessions. We speak peace to the storms. Come on, raise up your voice this morning. Come on, come on, raise it up, raise it up this morning. Raise up your voice and speak peace, declare peace, the peace of God that passes all human understanding. The people around you they can understand while you are calm. But there's a peace that even you you can explain because this is the peace that comes from not the man but from God. I want you to declare the peace of God, mercy, into your situation, into your life. The Bible says that the earth was without form and was void, but God did not move. He began to speak order. Let the words of peace from your mouth, let it cancel the declaration of calamity. The Bible declares Maro siete in the bosa that when the earth will without form and void, guess what? The Bible says, and God said, Maki and the boss, come on, look up your voice this morning and begin to say to the situation begin to say to your mind, say to your spirit, declare to your heart, declare to your person, declare to your Come on, declare, declare to your person. Declare that it is well. 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 With my mind, with my soul. Declare it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Sin has no dominion over me. Though the storms be raging. Though the storms be raging. Though the up 
Lord. Though there be just pestilence, yet I will declare in the midst of my storm. Come on, come on, come on. Take this time. Take this time and declare. Declare it's out of the Leap let the peace of God let the peace of God that passes all human understanding make it may our minds may our mind come encounter such peace come on come on come on take a few more minutes a few more minutes a few more minutes this morning a few more minutes is declare it, declare it. La Pasuto, speak to your mind. Li Pasuta, speak peace. The to your mind. Makora Bosia Nababa, Li Panda Babosia. Declare the of God to your mind. Declare the peace of God to your mind. Declare the of God to your mind. Declare the peace of God to your mind. Masikanda babosieta. Lekenda babosianda basa. Declare the peace of your spirit. Declare the peace of God. Masianda babosieta. For chaos only breeds more chaos. But in peace you can begin to set things in order. Set. Come on, declare the over your life, over your family, over your situation. Makosiata. Instructions do not come outside peace. It is in peace that you can receive instruction from God. Say, God, I speak peace to my mind. I speak peace to my spirit. Listen, sometimes situation will not cause you to confess negative because situation will cause you to say things that will bring you into more trouble but when God peace in your spirit then you can stand and begin to declare the word of God as God gives you utterance come on everybody put your hands on your head and say God this morning I receive the peace of God to my spirit I receive the peace of God to my mind I receive the David declares, he said, You have made me a wonder to many. It is the peace of God that causes you to wonder. A few more people, come on. You need to declare this word. This morning, come on, speak peace to your spirit. Masoto. God, I speak peace to my mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of boldness and of sound mind. Rest is from God. The Bible says he gives his beloved sleep and sleep speaks about rest. Declare rest to your spirit. Declare rest. The Bible declares that God rested on the seventh day and from the seventh day he created man and he said from man ought to walk from rest and not from chaos speak to every chaos in your mind speak to every chaos in your spirit declare the peace of God declare the peace of God Heavenly Father this morning come on everyone just lift up your hands to heaven this morning Let's say this prayer together. Heavenly Father, this morning, the same peace that Jesus had, the same peace that Jesus had, that he could sleep through storms. God, I pray that this morning, let that same peace rest upon us. In the name of Jesus, Marcos, Marcos, listen. This kind of peace comes from an understanding of who the God of who God is. God, this morning, I pray that the light of our understanding will be enlightened, O oh God, that we will understand you, God, and from our understanding of you, we will walk in peace. In the name of Jesus, God, we speak to every chaos in our lives. This morning, we call for the peace of God out of every storm. 
in the name of Jesus God from our mind our soul our spirit and body God in the name of Jesus we silence every voice of fear in the name of Jesus God from this moment God we declare Master, that we have sound mind in the name of Jesus we have sound mind in the name of Jesus we have sound mind in the name of Jesus we pray this morning come on put your hands together for Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah.